it's Sheldon back with another review, and today we are finally looking at the Sufraction statue. I don't know if you can see it, Josuke Higashikata uh, from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 8, Jojolian. So this one actually came out quite a while ago, uh, even though Jojolian is still going on, but we're finally taking a look at Gappy or Josuke 2.0 though. Okay, so a very quick look at the box though. Here are some of the poses you can put Josuke in, as well as the accessories. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the box really quickly though. So here is the side art box window over here, and uh, more side art as well as the top and bottom. And then for the accessories, let's go ahead and take a visual. So we'll take a closer look at it in a second, but you can see that Josuke comes with a display stand, uh, a host slew of hands, which we'll take a look at in a second, uh, some dango accessories, and then you have a neutral head and a yelling head, and you can actually stick these things into his mouth too. Uh, but speaking of accessories, let's go ahead and take a closer look. First off, Josuke comes with a pair of fists. He comes with a pair of relaxed hands, which are different from each other. Josuke also comes with a gripping hand for the cell phone, which also doubles as a pointing hand. As you can kind of see here, though, while we're at it, the phone has some nice details on the screen, but you can just take it out and uh, have him pointing. Josuke also comes with this gripping hand for chest pieces over here, uh, and they are separate pieces, so you can take them out. I just have it wedged in there just a little bit. Uh, but you can take them out, and this is for holding these chest pieces over here. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you, uh, but here's a chest piece right here. It's just around, looks like a bishop. And it also comes with this uh, horse or knight piece over here, though. Uh, but that is what this hand is for. Josuke also comes with a pair of these nub hands, which are for slipping into his pocket over here. And so unlike Jotaro, who needs a separate pants piece, the pockets are built into the figure itself, and you simply just arrange the angle appropriately, and you just slip them in over here. Josuke also comes with a pointing hand with a bubble at the fingertip, and I really have to say that this is my favorite accessory that he comes with, um, mostly because I love when figures come with accessories that have something to do with their stand power. I don't know if you can see it over here because it's so small and I can't get it to focus, uh, but the the uh, bubble has a star symbol on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that does it for the hands, though. Josuke also comes with this dongo box over here. I don't know if he can focus in on that, so... I don't know how to read that, unfortunately. I don't know Japanese, but this dongo box also holds this set of eight dongo over here. And these can come out, by the way, too. Uh, so that's a really nice touch. And Josuke also comes with this partially open tray of dongo. Uh, dongo are just like... Uh, I guess it's like, is it Dango Mochi, but it's like chewy balls, um, and inside it's like sesame. So he comes with this accessory over here, which is really nice, and he also comes with this piece over here, uh, which has something to do with this, but let's take a look at the alternative head. So Josuke also comes with this angry yelling face over here, uh, and I think, and I can't tell on camera, but I think it is painted to make it look like he has gap teeth. Uh, but overall, the head is done pretty well. As you can see, his skin tone is actually a little darker. I believe he's actually supposed to be darker skinned. Uh, but on top of this yelling face, you can put this piece over here, which probably doesn't make any sense all by itself. But it is a uh, sesame ball that he bites into, and it's filled, or, sorry, filled uh, with like sesame liquid, and it's supposed to be like exploding. So you can put that in his mouth over here, which is super, super fun. You'll see some of the pictures at the end. And, and you can also put one of these chest pieces in his mouth. Don't worry, this is actually what happens in the manga. Uh, but you can put one of these chest pieces in his mouth as well. Okay, that does it for the accessories. Uh, of course, you know, you also have the instruction manual. But let's go ahead and take a look at Josuke's articulation. All right, so Josuke's head is on that hinge joint over here, so here's it up and down. He does get the full rotation thanks to nothing impeding him. The neck is on a single joint, so you do get a bit of swivel. Mine is a little bit tight over here, uh, but you technically have it in there. So here it is combined, here it is combined. For the shoulders, you have that ball peg in, so you get about horizontal over here. No bicep swivel, but it does swivel at the shoulders. Uh, depending on the angle, you can give it more or less. You do have the full rotation. However, this is a soft piece, but it still does get in the way. But you can technically do it, you just have to be a bit careful. And then for the elbows, double jointed over here, you can get him to punch him in his face. Swivel at the elbow, being careful of the uh, cap on the elbow. 
You also have a forearm swivel technically. You also have the wrist hinge and rotation. The sleeve is sculpted pretty far down, so that does get in the way a little bit though. For the waist or ab, I would say, it's a socket here and a socket here, so you get some pretty decent range of motion swiveling. Here it is going forward, here it is going back. When combined with the waist, also a joint, together about this much, pretty good. Going back that much, uh, you do get some gapping, which is unfortunate over here. For the legs, the splits go out about this far, the sculpts do get in the way. Here is the leg going forward. This piece is soft, by the way, so uh, it does get out of the way, but I wouldn't risk it. Here it is going backwards, not that much. You do have a thigh swivel at the top. Double jointed knees, really far, and then for the ankles, Something that I do have a gripe about, or gripe about though, is the way the pants are sculpted. It's pretty far down like this. So going backwards, again, the well, it's a combination of things. The sneakers are sculpted pretty high up, uh, so they do get in the way of the ankle. So going far back is not that much of an option. Going forward really is hindered by the tongue of the shoe and the pant, but you can move it out of the way and the articulation is technically there. And then for the ankle rocker, not that much. So it's strange. It's mostly the sculpt out like this that like gets in the way, it bumps up. Um, so that does it for the articulation though. Let's go ahead and talk paint and sculpt. So Josuke stands about to the top of his head, a little under six inches, which comes out to be about 15 centimeters. Here is Gappy, Josuke 2.0, next to Josuke 1.0. Both of them have their legs apart here, but as you can see, they're roughly the same height, uh, with Josuke 1.0 being a little thicker down there, mostly due to his baggy pants. And here is Josuke next to Soft and Wet over here. So Soft and Wet, I have him bent over, but once I stand him up, you can see that he will be a little taller though. So in terms of size, um, Gappy is a little thinner, but about appropriate in terms of height, which makes sense though. The later Jojolian, uh, I would say actually later Jojo designs or character designs tend to be a bit more slim and feminine. Uh, in terms of the paint and sculpt over here, it's a, a single uniform, well, the color, the uniform is a single color, uh, but it has some really, really nice blue accents, and I suppose I should just uh, pull out for you all to get a closer look, though. Uh, but overall, again, thanks to it being a single color, you would think it'd be pretty dull, uh, but I believe a sailor, sailor uniform overall is just a good look. So white and blue, really cleanly done, a uh, really nice sculpt to add some texture in the uniform as well. Uh, but what really makes it shine again, it's kind of these cleanly done blue lines over here on not only the cuff, but also down here as well. And you can also see into uh, his shirt over here, and he does have abs, which is a really nice touch. And I really, really like, as you can see here, the emblems on his chest. So you do have this compass over here that's green and gold, I really like that winter green as well as this anchor over here, and the detail in the belt itself. And I just love how this, I'm pretty sure is his band, his underwear band, uh, sticking out. And he's got some purple underwear, which is really nice. The belt itself is also cleanly sculpted. There's some nice texture. And actually my favorite part of the character or figure is actually the Joestar birthmark right here. Very, very nice to include that little detail. Uh, as well as this blue top over here. So overall, in terms of appearance, I really do like Josuke. And my overall impression is that it's a pretty solid figure. It's been out for a while, and I believe he's actually not that hard to find last time I checked. Uh, don't quote me on that exactly, since I don't really remember. Um, so overall articulation, it's pretty good. My only real issue with this figure is that the ankle articulation is not that good. It's not new, but like, especially for this figure, thanks to the sculpt of the pants as well as the shoe, as well as the shoe, it does get in the way, and I forgot to mention, he does have a, a toe pivot in the articulation part, uh, but that's pretty expected. Um, so overall, I do like it. Something with my figure especially is that the knee joints are very, very loose. They just can't hold a pose. As you can see here, they just flop at a certain point. Uh, but overall, if you're looking for a solid figure to begin with, I would recommend Gappy, mostly because he comes with a lot of stuff. He's easy to find compared to some of the older figures, and he's a good-looking figure overall with good articulation. I found myself putting him in a lot of poses very easily. Um, one of the hardest parts of the videos is actually putting the 
characters in poses at the end, uh, but I had no trouble whatsoever with Gappy. So I, I do recommend, and he's one of my favorite. Okay, well that does it pretty much. Blah, blah, that pretty much does it for my review of Gappy, though. If you enjoyed, feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But yeah, I'll put Gappy in some poses at the end for you all. Thanks for watching.